Well, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, whatever time you're listening to this little video and welcome to United We Stand. Uh, this is our daily uh, cast, just talking to some of our friends in ministry. And it's wonderful to have Pastor Aaron Jarvis with me from London Daily Baptist. Uh, we had the privilege of him coming to talk to some of our leaders just a few months ago. And it uh, seems like a long time ago now. Um, but God really spoke to us and shook us up. And I'm so proud to be part of what he's doing there at London Derry and also Pastor Craig. Um, I just love these young guys that are on fire. That's been always been my heart to see the gospel preached with a real radical heart. And uh, these guys are leading the way. And so um, it's great to have you this morning, Aaron. Just share a little bit about your story because obviously you didn't, you weren't born a pastor. Nobody was born a pastor, but just tell us a little bit about your life and how you got to be what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, God obviously knew I was going to become a pastor one day, um, but I didn't see that in the plan. So grow, growing up, um, I was what you call lost. I was a lost young man growing up and I got myself involved in a, a few things. Uh, you know, I look back now, I kind of shake my head, but I come in contact with that all the time now in the, the role that I do. But I mean, just little things like just from how far I've come from where I was to where I am now. I mean, I think I, the first car I broke into, I was about 15 years of age. Um, I got into drugs at an early age. Um, there's, this, there's this word that's always branded about with me, used all the time. And to be fair, it makes me cringe. But at the same time, I, I get it. And it's this word gang. So whenever I go and talk anywhere, it's always mentioned, oh, Aaron, ex-gang member. Now, in today's world, they call what I was involved with um, gang. That they would, but to me, it was just a bunch of guys, a bunch of lads were just a family, were connected, were tied together. Um, but the way I always look at gang is, you know, the way they are today with their like little uh, bandanas and mm -hmm. they do videos and that it just makes me cringe when I look at it you see so I always like trying to stay away from that word gang but working in the schools um, that's the word that's always branded about always used um, but yeah it's more like this, this family connection just we're just so tight and growing up with these guys for so many years um, it was in the world's eyes a gang but in my eyes it is so much more than that and so that was my life for, for so long. And obviously, without going into too much detail, although I don't mind what detail we go into, um, there was just so much that comes with that way of life. Mm -hmm. And so there was the whole drug scene, there was the whole clubbing scene. There was, there was all different types, all different parts to, to that in my life back then. But the one bit I want, really wanted to just share today um, was to do more so with a tragedy that happened in my family and me and my wife we've been married it was our 18th anniversary 18th year anniversary just the other day so um, 18 years she's stayed with me which is fair play to her but we had a son Kyle who's now 17 turning 18 in May um, but this tragedy happened when we had our first daughter, Megan. Now, after, after Megan was born, like, I was involved in all sorts of things. And I'd said to my wife, I said, look, I'm going to stop the things that I'm doing. I'm either going to end up dead. I'm going to end up in prison. Um, I'm going to stop those things that I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just going into a pit, if you like. I'm, I'm spiraling out of control. Um, I was dabbling in drugs and stuff like that. And so now Megan was going to change you know, she was going to be my, my savior, if you like. She was going to change everything. And because daddy's little princess, um, I, I got I to gotta be there to look after her, et cetera, et cetera. Unfortunately, my daughter, she fell poorly really early on. And to cut a long story short, she fell onto a life support machine. And I remember praying that day and I prayed, God, I said, if you're real, I said, would would you would you save her if you're real don't let her die for all the bad things that i've done i was convinced that due to everything that i've done i was being punished well i got a call off the doctor quite quickly after that prayer and i ran down to the pooley baby unit 
and the doctor was there, my wife was crying, and mm. I was convinced on the way down that God had heard my prayer and he'd healed her. But when I got there, my wife, she was crying and they weren't tears of happiness. And the doctor said, your daughter's heart rate, it was 140, but it's dropped all the way to 40. We need you to give us permission to turn the life support machine off. Um, your daughter's going to die. And so in that moment, I had the hardest choice, hardest decision of my life. My wife was obviously broken, as you can imagine, as was I. And I allowed them to, to turn off the life support machine. You know, things even now still go through my head. Should I have done it? Should I have not? And I remember that a few days later, there was, because my daughter was put on ice and they would put my daughter on ice and she'd already died at this stage. We, we watched as my daughter died in front of us and they'd put my daughter on ice and my wife would warm her up under the, the quilts and then the nurses would take her back, put her on ice. It's like a grieving process of summer. Um, but, but in that time, I remember just sitting at the bottom of the hospital bed. My wife was in hospital for about a week and I sat at the bottom of the bed and this, this vicar he came in a chaplain and he said, can I, can I pray for you guys? And I just looked at him. I was filled with rage and I just, it's like, no, you're not praying for me. My wife allowed him to pray for her. We weren't Christians or anything like that. And I remember just looking out the hospital window and I wouldn't pay any attention to him. I just looked out the hospital window and I said, God, if you're real, I will never, ever serve you. If you are real, I will never serve you. You could have saved my daughter, but you let her die. And so... It's, it's been a massive turnaround to the fact of now I can't help but serve him. Mm -hmm. And like my daughter's like the greatest evangelist I ever knew. There's a verse in the Bible, I think it's Genesis 50, verse 20, and it's about Joseph. And Joseph talks to his brothers after they'd thrown him in prison and everything that happened to him. And he says, what the enemy intended for harm, God turned around for the saving of many lives. And my life just spiraled even worse out of control after my daughter died. I became a drug addict, um, suicidal. My wife has her own testimony as well of where it took her. But we look back at that time now after we found Jesus. She was the first person I led to Jesus, by the way. She said, if God can change you, he must be real. Mm -hmm. And so after that time, it was like I look back and I say, what the enemy intended for harm, God intended for the saving of many lives. He's turned it around. And so now uh, I've completely devoted my life to serve Christ and to win as many people for Jesus as possible because I know is the way, I know is the truth, and I know is the life. There's no other way. I've done both worlds. And if I could do it again, I would find Jesus in my earliest possible moment. And so that moment, what broke me, in one respect, it, it made me, but it only made me because of, of God being the one that scooped yeah. in. Psalm, Psalm 40, I waited patiently for the Lord. He heard my cry. Uh, and that was, if you like, that's my testimony, Psalm 40. Yeah, that, that Psalm finishes, doesn't it, with this, and many will see and fear. And uh, that will uh, be the, the resounding testimony of your life. I'm sure that many have seen what God has done in you. And that's drawn many to, to come to your church and to see your church grow and expand. And um, God's been doing some wonderful things with you at Londonderry, hasn't he? So you took on a church that was pretty much old school, run down, just a few old ladies. And then just tell us a little bit about what God's been doing recently in terms of the people who have been coming and the lives that have been changed. Yeah, well, first of all, just to say on those that were left at the church um, when I took you on, I think there was about 25 of us. But um, they were... They were warriors in prayer, which is our foundation. And so um, God couldn't have given me a better 25 people, if you like, to start with. Majority of them were older ladies, um, but they've been faithful all the way through. And now we're just, I think they're seeing the things they prayed for, they're now witnessing. It's like they're walking into the promised land. And so we've seen over 200 people come to faith. Um, in Londonderry, I became the pastor three years ago. Amazing. And, um, we've seen 200 people come to faith in that time. We've had baptisms every month for the last two and a half years. The only way the baptism stopped is when we're on lockdown. So I'm really like annoyed. One of the things I always say, and I, 
it's a genuine hand and heart. Um, when I'm leading nobody else to Jesus, when I lead no one else to Jesus, I'm like, Lord, take me home. My mission's over. I've done what I've come to do. I was put on this earth to bring people to him. The moment that stops, I'm ready to go home. And so during lockdown, I was saying to my wife, I said, I haven't led anyone to the Lord in the last two weeks. I said, you don't think Jesus is going to take me home, do you? And all of a sudden, we got a text message off someone. Um, and basically, they'd come back to faith after listening to some of our talks online. Great, mate. So, oh, thank goodness for that. I didn't want to go home just yet. But it's, it, that's who we are. It's our DNA. Our DNA at the church is prayer, fasting, and the gospel. Three simple things. But in the early church, they were so vital. And so if they were vital for the early church, it's vital for us. Yeah. And your church is, is, is a strange makeup of different sorts of nations as well, isn't it? God has been bringing sort of all sorts of people to you. Well, yeah, we've got many nations. For one that, like you say, we started with 25 older ladies. And so now we're actually four congregations. So we, we outgrew our building and... Then we had an Iranian church, which all started because a Muslim came up to the church and he saw my banner outside and it says, Jesus is Lord. And he came in and he said it offended him. And I said, oh, oh, OK, I'm sorry that it offends you, but it's the truth. And then he said to me, we're closing down your churches and we're turning them into mosques. And when he said that to me, something inside burnt. And so I went home and I cried before the Lord and I said, God, I can't have them closed down your churches and turn them into mosques and then i just felt god say no you're gonna take them out of the mosques and turn them into the church mm. and so i went back up the church and i said to my leaders we are planting a church that all happened because a, a man came into the church where well, the enemy tried to water everything down but a man came into the church and said your banner offends me and on the back end of that, I said, well, for that, we're going to plant a new church. And so we planted the Iranian church in February the 1st, 2018, I think it was, or 2019. It's been going for a whole year anyway. So 2019. So it's been going for a whole year. And oh, it's been baptisms after baptisms in there. So many salvations. It's been incredible. And then just before lockdown, we planted a Brazilian church um, and we've been given a church building over in Birmingham Monument Road. So we took on the old church of Redeemer. So those remaining people that was at that church, which was, um, I don't want to say dying out, but you wouldn't, it was dwindling out. Mm -hmm. But there's the flame still there. I mean, the, the 12 people that came across to us, again, great foundation. They're prayer warriors. And so they're going to see what they've always prayed for. I totally believe they're going to see what we're seeing at London Derry now. We're going to go in with the same DNA. And I believe it's going to go even quicker there. I think if you talk to me in 12 months time after lockdown, this is when we've opened up that church, I'll be saying like, there's a hundred people give their lives to the Lord. Like in three years working in that area. Um, I just, I can't wait to see what God's going to do. And so our vision of the church is we're going to plant churches from here to the coast, into Europe, into the world. That was our vision from day one. 25 ladies, I shouted it out to them. Some of them said, amen. Now we all say amen. <laughs> That's absolutely brilliant. And uh, obviously God's doing some powerful things even during lockdown. And uh, we've been talking and uh, you know that God's been saving people at Sedgley and beyond. And, yeah. uh, so we're standing and believing with you that even though you might not see everybody that's getting saved, mate, they're, they're still getting saved and yeah. uh, all your prayers are still being answered in heaven. So um, I said to both you and to Craig, Benny, it would be lovely for the three of us to do a conference at some point. We might not have the time because if Jesus spins, speeds things up for us, we won't have time to mess with conferences. But if we do get a chance, it would be lovely to stand on the platform with the, the, the two of you. And uh, we're going to call our conference Plundering Hell because that's what we're all about, isn't it? We want to take as many souls back as we possibly can. So hang on, let me just turn that machine off. There we go. So there we go. That's probably going uh, recording when people decide they're going to ring in your house. <laughs> um, so really good to talk to you this morning, mate. Would you would you pray for us before we go? Yeah. Um, no I, I just pray that the spirit of the evangelist, you know, I'm so excited, you know, when I talk to evangelists, you've got that kind of heart for souls. We just pray that spirit of the evangelist would fall upon 
the, the church in the black country, you know, we're, we're seeing breakthrough, you're seeing breakthrough, but there's got to be so much more that God's got for us. So would you just lead us to the Lord as we go, as we go this morning? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that you died and you rose again for each and every one of us. Where would we be today if it wasn't for you? And so, Lord, we pray right now, Lord, that you would break our heart for what breaks yours. And I pray that would be our prayer, that you break our heart for what breaks yours. The early church never asked for greater anointing. They asked for greater boldness. And so, Lord, I pray that you would yeah. fill us with a spirit of boldness in Jesus' name. Give us favor, Lord, as we take the message to the ends of the earth, whether the ends of the earth, our part, is Gornal, or whether it be Dudley, or whether it be Neverton, or West Bromwich, or Oldbury, or Africa, wherever it may be, Lord, mm -hmm. let us run the part of the race that you've called us to do, and let us do it well. Let us glorify your name, in Jesus' name, and to you, and you alone, Lord, let only you receive the glory, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's uh, so wonderful to chat with you again today. You're always an inspiration when I speak to you. And I'm sure you've been inspired. Those who are watching by video, we, we, we've seen lots and lots of people from uh, different backgrounds listening, people that don't even know Jesus. And my prayer this morning is some have been listening to your testimony, heartbreaking as it was, that they'll to come to find Jesus as Lord and Saviour, which would just be amazing, wouldn't it? So we'll feed back. If anybody's given their lives to Jesus this morning, would you let us know so we can feed that back? But God bless you, mate. Thank you so much for all you're doing and keep up the good work. God bless you. Bless you, mate. Bless you all. Ta-da.